Okay. Um, basically, it's a session about mobile and handheld learning. And um, it's a general overview session because I think that lots of people don't know exactly what mobile or handheld learning are. So a general overview of the kind of technologies and the kind of applications of those in the classroom. Yeah, we also look at a couple of case studies of mobile learning actually being implemented in, in learning. So uh, a couple in high resource contexts like the UK and then at a couple of low resource contexts like in Bangladesh and in South Africa. And the idea behind that really was to show that there's a big spread because people often think that technology is always uh, developed countries or richer countries, whereas in fact some interesting stuff is going on in, in uh, less well-developed countries where you might imagine the infrastructure not to be so good. Um, but it, it turns out really that mobile is, is the cheapest and quickest infrastructure to build in a country, much cheaper than putting in internet, digging up roads and cables and things like that. So mobile seems to us to have a, a pretty good future, precisely because it's a, a cheaper technology. I also noticed doing, doing talks on mobile learning, which we've been doing for over a year now, that participants actually have more to say each time we give a talk on this topic. So a couple of the participants in the session, in both sessions that we did, had ideas that they've been trying out with their, their learners. So it's something that is starting to spread. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, how can teachers get started if they're interested in M learning? I'd say uh, the easiest way to, to start is a sort of low-end approach. So assuming that your, mo your donors aren't going to have sophisticated devices like smartphones, mm -hmm. they're certainly going to have a low-end mobile phones or very simple uh, mobile devices. And what I always think is a good idea is that teachers go and explore what kind of apps are available for these phones and then recommend a few for their learners to actually try out out of class time. So starting perhaps um, just by you know, telling learners what's there, getting the learners to try stuff out, feeding back in the classroom itself, but doing it as a very kind of um, discrete approach initially, and then longer term looking at ways to kind of strategically integrate mobile devices into classroom teaching, which is the more difficult, I think, more complex area. So starting from simple to more complex. It's worth bearing in mind, I think, that you, even if it's just the teacher who's got a phone, there's a lot that can be done. You know, if you've got a video camera on the phone generally, something to record audio, something to take photographs. So there's all, all kinds of creative stuff you could do in the class with just one phone. Yeah. So um, Nikki's 14-year-old daughter is a great example. Her and her friends have spent a lot of time uh, shooting videos on very simple, basic mobile phones and, and shooting photographs and putting them together in collages with music or voiceovers and things. And I think it, for us, it's more the productive side of things, of having people record themselves and video themselves. And you get that kind of fluency and pronunciation practice, and also the chance to create something. Yeah, I think the great thing about mobile learning is that we're bringing devices into the classroom that learners are already using in their normal life. It's something that they are familiar with. The technology is not complicated. It's a device that they have no hang-ups about or no worries about. Oh, actually, this is my third, although it says it's only the second ISTEC conference. This is actually my third because there was a sort of um, dress rehearsal mm -hmm. three years ago, and it was, it was just for the, the ISTEC teachers, mm -hmm. and I think there were three of us speaking, so it was a fairly compact day, and it was about 80 people. And so when I came back last year, and it had gone from 80 people to 1,000, and we found ourselves in a huge university. It was, it was quite, a, quite a big project. And I think, I mean, it's a combination of many things. It's a combination of, of good, uh, good management and good planning and things. And I suspect um, finance as well, which helps in terms of being able to get speakers in and things. But the fact is, you know, it's a great location, great facilities, lots of fantastic speakers, both Turkish and, and from outside. And um, I suspect it's probably you know, one of those conferences that everyone's got on their I'd like to speak at list at some point now. Yeah. A, I think it's a great one. It is, yeah. This is my second ISTEC conference. Um, and like Gavin says, I agree with everything. And of course, being held in Istanbul is a big plus. Um, and the teachers themselves who attend the conference, I mean, as a presenter, the teachers are great. They're incredibly welcoming and friendly and participative during the talk. You know, when you ask a question, you do often get a response, which is not always the case. Um, so, yes, it's on definitely last year was one of the best conferences for me, and I'm expecting it to be one of the best conferences for me this year as well as an attendee. And we've finished now as well. We've done our two sessions, so we can go and enjoy ourselves tonight and then just be in the audience tomorrow, which is also really, really nice, I think.